One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for another episode of AAF Power Rankings. Another week has gone in the books for the Alliance. Was it a little bit better than last week? Was it a little bit worse? We'll discuss that a little bit, but today we're going to be talking Power Rankings rankings where your favorite AAF team ranks this week on Treve Talks' official most dependable power rankings. We go over some stats and some games, go over some overall games, go over who had a good week, who had a bad week. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Treve Talks week number two AAF power rankings. Coming in at number eight, we have the Atlanta Legends. Now I had the Legends ranked eight last week. A lot of people kind of talked to me and were like, how is Memphis not last? How is Memphis not last? I'll tell you why. It's because of a guy named Matt Sims. Matt Sims is bad. Matt Sims can't throw a ball to save his whole entire existence. The Legends can't sustain a drive to save their entire life. They lost to the Fleet 24-12. to The play calling on the offensive and defensive end were just incredibly uh, silly. None of it made any sense. I mean, within the last two minutes... Uh, the Legends were down, I believe, at the time. I don't think it was 12 just yet. I think they were down uh, 6. It was a 4th down and 13 after a sack. And the coach had the punting unit out there. to trot. They had the punting unit trot on there. And then they called their last time out. And then they went for it on 4th and 13. Pure Jacksonville Jaguar status. And they are 0-2. And they looked freaking awful. Matt Sims threw for 160 yards. Their leading rusher was Lawrence Pittman with 42 yards. A crumble Watt, Watt Wadley had 70 receiving yards on the offensive end. Their leading defenders, Carlos Merritt, got an interception for the Legends. And Tyson Graham Jr. led in tackles with eight. But unfortunately, the 0-2 Legends, y'all come in at number eight in Troop Talks Power Rankings. Coming in at number seven, we have the Salt Lake Stallions. Now, the Stallions were one of the more favorited teams to win the championship this year, but unfortunately, Dennis Erickson's group has been hit with a ton, a ton of injuries at the quarterback position. Get this, B.J. Daniels, original starting quarterback, IR, out. Josh Woodrum, next man up, hamstring injury, out. Matt Lenahan comes in. Matt Lenahan sucks it up. They don't want to play him. Bam. Austin Allen is now in. That's four quarterbacks. Three of them have started. For, obviously, BJ has not played a game. But three different starting quarterbacks in two weeks for the Salt Lake Stallions. That's not a good thing to have. That's usually going to put your organization in shambles. Uh, they're going to take a two-position drop from five to seven. And uh, I know I just said the Legends were ranked 8, but I actually had the Fleet ranked 8. I just didn't double-check. So the, uh, the Legends end up maintaining exactly uh, where they were last week. So uh, coming back, though, to what I have for the Stallions, Austin Allen wasn't asked to throw the ball a lot, but they did run the ball with authority. I will give them that. There was two things that did go well for the Stallions this week, and it was their run game and their defense by one Carter Schultz. Carter Schultz had two sacks, and he was also the leading tackler with six. This guy looks like one of those guys that's going to come out of this league and get an NFL contract. He's been a menace. He's you know, unblockable at points. You know, He's just getting into the backfield, making all these plays. He's impressive. He's one good thing to come, uh, come good out of the Salt Lake Stallions. Now the run game, though, for the Stallions also has been awesome, at least for this week. Joel Boganen, I'm never going to get his name, Boganen, Boganen, you know, he had 70 yards rushing uh, with Brandon Alvers 59, so, you know, over 100 yards rushing between the two backs there. Matt Osiata had a costly fumble early in the game and had his playing time drastically diminished, and you got to imagine with the uh, good game that Joel had and Oliver as well on the ground that he's probably not going to be getting um, much more playing time. Demonterey Pearson L was the leading receiver with 28 yards. So unfortunately, like I said, Austin Allen only threw 114 yards. They're not going to really have that much of an impressive leading receiver. Now, it's not the Stallions' fault 
that they're necessarily in this ranking. They had every chance in the entire world to win this game. It was almost frustrating watching it. I watched it live. If you watched it live with me, you know how frustrating it was. That kicker missed three field goals. <laughs> three field goals. You think NFL kicking's bad. Look at the AAF. And it's just, it's, you should be gone because I, it's the only job you have in the AAF is to kick field goals. I mean, you're not even kicking off. You know, you're not doing any of that. You're not kicking extra points. You know, you're there to kick field goals. And if you go one for three on your field goals, you're not going to be around this league for very long. So, you know, you got to feel for the Stallions. They had every chance in the world to win this game. Unfortunately, they could not do it. They come in at 0-2 and, and they drop two spots on Troop Talk's power rankings. Coming in at number six, we have the Memphis Express. The Express did not move. And a lot of people in the comment section last week expressed their opinion on how the Memphis Express wasn't in last place. They definitely don't deserve to be in last place this week. They, again, just like the Stallions, had every chance in the entire world to win this game against the Arizona Hotshots. Unfortunately, though, for <clears throat> the, the Memphis uh, Express, they could not get it done. Uh, it was very, very crazy to watch how the Express were getting so, so very close to uh, winning this game, unfortunately, just falling short to the Arizona Hot Shots, who definitely showed that they are a little bit vulnerable, um, and they are definitely uh, a team that you can beat, but the Express just couldn't get it done. They continue to lack in quarterback play with Christian Hackenberg, who is a... Uh, He's thrown the least amount of yards in week one and week two. He only threw 102 yards. In fact, the running back, Zach Stacy ran for 101 yards. So just one less yard than Hackenberg uh, threw. And he really, really is struggling. That's why you got to get future AAF MVP Zach Mettenberger out there to really turn this team around. I'm telling you, Christian Hackenberg is not the answer. However, Zach Stacy did put together an impressive, impressive resume in this game. I was very impressed by his running style. Uh, this was a guy that I thought was going to break out in the AAF. Didn't really do it in week one, but week two, he definitely showed out. Uh, first rusher to get over 100 yards in AAF history was Zach Stacy. So congratulations to Mr. Zach Stacy, Brees Horn led uh, the, the Express in receiving yards at 56. Anthony Johnson led in sacks. He got one. And Jeremy Cutler also got an interception. So 14 for 25, 102 yards for uh, Mr. Christian Hackenberg. As far as rushing goes, Stacy 19 carries for 101 yards. It's a 5.3 average with a touchdown as well to go to it. Now, this was a game, again, like I said, the Express had a chance to win. They led 9-0 to zero at one point. Uh, in fact, they entered the locker room with a 12-0 to zero lead. A 14-point fourth quarter by the Hot Shots really put the nail in the, in the Express's coffin. And unfortunately, they had to come in at number 6 in True Talks' AAF power rankings. But I really hope they start winning football games because this is a team I kind of want to root for. Coming in at number five with the biggest jump so far in Troop Talk's power rankings, we have the San Diego Fleet going from eight to five, a three uh, position jump. Now, that's not to say I was necessarily impressed with the Fleet. I was watching this game, and it was one of those games where it was nine to three for damn near the entire time. Picked up towards the end, and the uh, Fleet were able to get some last-minute scoring opportunities. They didn't score a single touchdown the first 111 minutes, and then the last five minutes of the game, they managed to score two touchdowns, which was huge. And then, you know, again, the Legends really poor play calls uh, towards the end of that game as well. That kind of put the nail in the coffin. But I'm not necessarily sold on the San Diego Fleet just yet. Philip Nelson threw for 142 yards. Uh, Jaquan Gardner is a guy that is on this fleet team that I think is very explosive, very speedy. He picks one hole and he goes and he is just gone. Very, very speedy. Fun to watch. Jaquan Gardner, 104 yards. Second running back to rush over 100 yards. And he had more yards than Stacy as well. Um, so that was impressive. 49 yards for Terrell Watson as well uh, in the run game. So 100 and about 53, 54 yards rushing for the fleet this week. Nelson Spruce led in receiving with 58. And Ryan Muller also got an interception. Now let's go over Philip Nelson. He had a terrible game. Terrible game. He went 14 for 30, 46 completion percentage, 142 yards, one interception, no touchdown. So... The Fleet also don't really have a quarterback, whether it be Nelson or Berkovici. So that's going to be kind of 
you know, that's going to be a hindrance. They can rely on the run game. Uh, Gardner, again, 15 carries, 140 yards. That's a 6.9-yard average. So this is going to be a team that's going to be relying heavily on Gardner in the run game because his quarterback play has been pretty, pretty bad. You know, a lot of teams around the league have really bad quarterback play. That's been kind of a hindrance for a lot of teams, and that is no different for the San Diego Fleet, even though he completed a pass without looking. I know you guys are going to comment that. I've seen it. Don't worry about it. I've seen it. But, you know, like, the Fleet are definitely one of the teams I was least impressed by. Definitely, you know, least impressed by the 1-1 one and, one and the 2-0 and o teams, which is why they come in at number 5. Coming in at number 4, we have the San Diego Commanders. The Commanders did not rise or drop in the power rankings, but they did rise in my heart. One of the better teams for me to watch, at least. They're exciting. Um, they played the Orlando Apollos, which so far has been the best game in the Alliance history. It was a very, very back and forth game. The, uh, st the, uh, excuse me, the Commanders took a 12-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. The, uh, Apollos then came back. The third quarter again was dominated by San Antonio, but the fourth quarter, the Apollos just put the pedal to the metal and made sure that they did not let San Antonio creep back into this one but I think this is by far not the last you're going to see this commander's team they are very talented and have a lot of uh potential I think they have three of the best wide receivers in this whole entire league and you know they're probably gonna lose all three to contracts at the end of the season so you know that's gonna be interesting to see where those guys go but starting things off we got Logan Woodside 223 yards a young man that I have been very, very uh, adamant about that I really think is going to be able to succeed in this league. Uh, he struggled a little bit week one, but week two he definitely came out and showed all of his potential that he had um, and threw 223 yards in the process. And that was a it was a very good game for Mr. Woodside. Kenneth Farrow, another guy that I've been very uh, you know talkative about and when I think that he's going to have a good career as well. He had 74-yard rushing. Uh, Demarcus Ayers actually led in receiving with 80 yards. Mikhail McKay, my guy, the guy who I think is probably the best wide receiver uh, in this league, was second in receiving yards. He racked up 36. Aaron Green in there with 35. Mr. Austin Larkin got a sack. There were no interceptions for the uh, commanders, at least. Joel Landing led in tackles with four. Total completion percentage there, 20 for 39 for Woodside, 51%, one touchdown, one interception. So, Logan Woodside has potential to really take the San Antonio team by the nuts and really lead it. This is a team that can win the West because, I mean, you got them, you got the Stalins, hot shots, you know. The hot shots prove to be vulnerable, and I think give the Commanders another chance, they might be able to knock off the hot shots. And this is a young team who did lose to the Apollos, but to keep your eye on because they could take over. In the later weeks. Next up, coming in at number three, we have the Birmingham Iron. The Iron didn't increase or decrease. They maintained at number three, but they very, very easily could have dropped on this power rankings. The Stallions defense gave the Iron everything they could handle on the offensive side of the ball. Unfortunately for the Stallions, they didn't miss three field goals. <laughs> Otherwise, they might have won this game. Uh, I wasn't necessarily that impressed with the Irons' performance. I mean, Luis Perez was a guy that looked like an MVP-level player last week. He only threw 184 yards this week. However, his story is still very impressive. We got Trent Richardson leading on the ground, another guy who had a really good week last week. Not so much this week, only rushed for 40 yards. He also led in receiving yards with 50, so 91 total yards. Jeremy Falk got a sack. Uh, Luis Perez overall throwing stats. He went 24 for 38, 63 percent, 138 yards. And now you're probably saying that completion percentage is pretty good, Drew. What do you think about that? I think he only threw 140 yards, 184 yards. So I mean, you know, you throw 38 passes, you complete 24 of them. You should probably have a little bit more than 184 yards at the end of the day. But that is just me. This Iron Team is a team that is on the edge of losing. They are probably the worst 2-0 team. They were the worst 1-0 uh, team last week. Uh, they have a team knocking on their door to potentially defeat them and take their spot. But this Iron Team, I think sooner rather than later, is going to fall off if they keep on playing how they played against the Salt Lake Stallions. Coming in at number two, we have the Arizona Hot shots. Obviously, now the hot shots took a dip. They took a one place dip last week, being number one. Now, this week, 
being number two. They were in a battle with the Memphis Express, a game where they should have just swept them under the rug, especially with uh, a man that only had 102 passing yards. Uh, John Wolfort, he put together, again, a decent game, went 194 yards. Tim Cook was the leading rusher for the Hot Shots with 73 yards. Jarrell Presley right behind him with 57, and Justin Stockton with 54. So, obviously, another game over 100 yards, and it was impressive on the ground, and Wolfort did good throughout the air as well. Josh Huff, leading receiver, 84 yards. Former NFL guy, Rashad Ross, 67 yards. Those two were dominant. Deshaun Downey got two sacks for the uh, for the hot shots. Obviously, the overall completion percentage, he went 14 for 22, 63%, 194 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Wolford cannot be turning the ball over as often as he is. So, this is what I was saying earlier about Perez. Perez threw 24 completions for 184 yards. Mr. Wolford threw 14 for 194 yards. That's pretty decent. 14 yards, 14 completions, almost completing uh, 200 yards. That is an impressive feat. Again, the rushing game was well, did well as well. And, you know, a lot of the receivers, you know, stepped up as well for this Hot Shots organization. Unfortunately, though, they were in a battle, 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 battle with the Memphis Express, a game where they could have easily lost. But what good teams do is step up in the fourth quarter, and that's what they did. They went scoreless the whole first half, uh, down 12-0. to Then they scored in the third quarter, held the Express to no points, and then they dropped 14 in the fourth. That's what good teams do. They come back towards the end. But unfortunately for the Hot Shots, I can't call them the best team in the AAF for now because that team is. Coming in at number one, we have the Orlando Apollos, the Steve Spurrier-led Orlando Apollos. And boy, oh boy, did they have themselves a game against the San Antonio Commanders. Like I said, probably the best game in Alliance history. This team stepped up in the closing moments, did what it needed to do to win, and they did. And they also just dominated offensively and defensively. Garrett Gilbert, current leader for the MVP race right now. 393 yards of record so far in the AAF for most passing yards. To Ernest Johnson got 57 yards rushing. Charles Johnson, the wide receiver, had himself a day. One of the best uh, performances by anybody um, on on uh, as a receiver. Best performance as an individual receiver. Charles Johnson, 192 yards. That's going to be hard to match. Almost 200 yards receiving. Garrett Gilbert was hitting him up. All day long. Anthony Moten got one sack. Keith Reeser got an interception. Let's talk about Mr. Garrett Gilbert for a second. He went 19 for 28. That's 67% completions. 393 yards. No picks. Two touchdowns. That's tremendous. Garrett Gilbert, again, the former Carolina Panther quarterback that stepped in for the absence of Cam Newton, is definitely showing why. He has the talent to be an NFL quarterback at some point. Mr. Akeem Hunt, who was an MVP of last year, had negative four-yard rushing on two attempts to Ernest Johnson, took the reps at the running back position, the most eight for 57. And then, like I said, Mr. Charles Johnson, seven receptions, 192 yards as a 27.4-yard average with one touchdown. And he was not necessarily the only receiver that balled out. Mr. Jalen Marshall, three receptions, 84 yards, one touchdown. And then Mr. Chris Thompson, two receptions, 70 yards, and no touchdowns. But that's a 35-yard average. Jalen Marshall, of course, 28-yard average. The Orlando Apollos definitely offensively have the best team uh, around them, and their defense is not too bad as well. They did allow 29 points. However, I think that they could uh, step up, obviously. You know, you've seen what they did to the Atlanta Legends last week. Um, you know, if this team puts together a whole entire game on the offense and defensive side of the ball, I don't think anybody could beat this Orlando Apollos team. And before I head out of here, I thought I'd update you guys on the True Talks AAF picks. If you have entered from YouTube, here is where you are ranked. Let me see here. On the higher end of things, Amp850. J comes in with a 5-3 and three record. He comes in at 10th place, and that is number two ranked out of everybody who is 5-3. and three. Next up, we have Alex B, who is in 19th place. He'll be coming in with a 4-4 four and four record. And then coming up next, we have David Florio, who took one of the biggest drops. He went 2-6, and six, coming in at number 24 
overall. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, make sure you like the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Trave Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trave Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trave Vaughn Pixley. Make sure also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trave Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, you guys have a great day.